welcome to the video. Here we are, week three. This is probably going to be a very short one because, uh, to be quite honest with you, I'm not really sure what to say. I mean, Michigan played a football game, and Michigan won the game, and the outcome was never really in doubt. Um, it's a scrub game against a, a scrub team, so what are you, I mean, you going to say? Um, the only complaint I've heard from people is that Michigan didn't rank 40 up on these guys. Um, they won 28-7, to and they were favored by 34. Um, it doesn't really surprise me, though, because the offense is still very much a work in progress. And after how much it's been maligned these last um, two years or so, it's unfortunately not quite at the point where it can go and hang like 30 or 40 on these scrub teams, which is frustrating, but, you know, it is what it is. It's um, going to be a work in progress, but it's showing signs of improving. Um, Jake Rudock did, uh, had um, had an okay outing today. I mean, that's he was just okay today. He wasn't stellar, but he wasn't terrible either. Again, I still think he's getting kind of a bad rap from people. I think, um, it's like I've been saying, Jake Rudock is here to help. I mean, he's not going to make this team better, but he won't make this team worse. Okay, that's on the rest of the offense. And um, this is something I noticed, actually, when... Um, he made some long passes that fell incomplete, and um, Wilson Spike came in. He threw a couple long balls, which looked pretty good, by the way, and they fell incomplete as well. And it looked to me the case of the receivers not being able to um, adjust to the passes properly. Now, I'm not sure if that's on the quarterbacks overthrowing the balls or the receivers just aren't getting there in time, but whatever it is, um, uh, OC Tim Drevno can get that worked out probably. Um... The offense was very much, once again, focused on the rush. Uh, Davion Smith didn't really have a good game this time, but Ty Isaac had an absolutely phenomenal game. He had eight rushes. I think he averaged about 14 yards per rush for 116 yards. He got a 76-yard rushing touchdown, which I think is the biggest play we've had on offense since 2012 when Denard ran for 79 and a touchdown against um, Air Force, I think. So... I think we have a number two receiver now in Ty Isaac, or excuse me, number two running back. I do kind of wish um, uh, we passed a bit more so Rudolph can get a bit more of a feel of the passing game, but obviously Harbaugh wants to focus on the running game. Uh, Jake Butt had a quiet game. Uh, I think got like two receptions, I think. And again, that makes sense because I think Harbaugh's focus these last couple of games has been on developing the run game because Michigan didn't really have a run game these last two years, so to get something, anything going out of the department is progress. Uh, I still would love to see a bit more passes, though, but I think we're at a point now where I'm starting to feel comfortable with the running game. I'm going to have to see how it does against a quality opponent, you know, an opponent that's not a scrub team, and uh, BYU next week will be a good test. But I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel comfortable with the run game. Um... Offense, uh, reception, um, Amar Darbo had another good game. Um, Jerry Chesson did as well. Uh, Rudock's passing rating was, I have the stats here, 14-22 for 123 yards, 5.6 yards average, a touchdown and a pick for a QBR of 39.3. So, like I said, not stellar, but not, like, terrible either. So, um, yeah, I mean, offense did what it was supposed to do. Um, it took, it wasn't pretty, it wasn't flashy, but it took care of business. I mean, it just kept racking up points there, and the outcome was never really in doubt. Now, to be fair, they didn't really do much of anything in the second half, but I think it's safe to say the team kind of stopped caring about midway through the third quarter. I mean, hell, Harbaugh put the, the second stringers on offense in to close out the fourth quarter. So, yeah, you could tell by the time the fourth quarter rolled around, um, the team had just kind of checked out, which... Um, to be fair, it's understandable because, again, ever since the kickoff, everyone knew that the outcome was going to be in doubt. Uh, the fact that UNLV found the end zone at all, I'm, is like, I'm attributing that like half to luck as opposed to anything else. But, um, yeah, anyway, the offensive line also had an average showing today. I mean, they, they did it okay. They did their job good. A lot of good blockings. Um, good protection for Rudock. Um, except for a couple of occasions, he was never really pressured. Um, Joe Carriage went down with an apparent ankle injury, so that's a significant loss because of a lack of depth in the offensive line. Um, hopefully something serious, and he'll be back soon. He's also team captain, so you know you want to get him there for leadership purposes. But um, Darbo looked a little gimpy as well toward the end. He might just be a little banged up, a little tired. I didn't really see anything that wrong with him, but he looked a little bit gimpy, but... 
Hopefully those guys get healthy in time for BYU or at least start the conference schedule. Defense um, looks, once again, impressive. Their passing game for ULLV ended in more picks than it did touchdowns. And the running game, let me just put it this way. Chris Warmly was absolutely murdering people out there. I mean, it was just, wow. He just absolutely ended a couple guys. I mean, every time these guys tried to get something, anything going with rushing, Michigan was like, no, you're not, you're not even doing that. Don't even try it. But, um, yeah, I got a couple picks as well. That's pretty good. You know, this defense is a very, very aggressive defense. Durkin and um, Madison really got them very aggressive. They are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, it's going to be very much like last year. Defense is going to keep Michigan a lot of these games. Um, but my hope is that the offense will progress to a point where the defense won't just get tired out and just collapse. Like that's so often last year where the defense held in, but because the offense just couldn't get anything going, they eventually got worn out. So um, hopefully this will be different this year. And the offense is progressing, so that looks good. Uh, special teams, again, didn't really see much of action, but, I mean, the most thing I can say is that O'Neal had some good protection. I mean, he snapped the ball, and, you know, he had time to tweet, you know, I'm going to drop this at the three-yard line, LOL. Um, the calls modeling agency, book a photo shoot, wave at the students, say, how you doing, mates? Yeah, we're going to win the game. You know, it's just, special teams are pretty good. Um, Jabril Peppers had a couple good punt returns. Um, I think at a 20-yard return and a 40-yard return. Really? Yeah, second. Brush your teeth first. Um, all right, so time to wrap this up here. Anyway, um, yeah, good team win. Not really much to say. I mean, Michigan was supposed to win this game. They won the game. They certainly fared better than a lot of other teams in the Big Ten. Uh, Nebraska is currently losing to Miami. Um, Northwest Minnesota somehow, some way, he got a win. Ohio State. Looking pretty suspect right now. Um, they won by a touchdown over a MAC team, uh, Northern Illinois University. Um, and I think the only reason they really won is because those guys were trying to lose the game more than Ohio State was. And in fact, I got an Ohio State fan. I met the other day on TF2 who was on Steam right now telling me, oh my God, I am so embarrassed for our team. I'm like, yeah, welcome to Michigan the last two years. Um, but yeah, they're definitely looking suspect now. There's a possibility they could actually drop in the rankings tonight if Bama pulls off the win over Ole Miss, which I'm kind of hoping they don't because I would love to see Ole Miss out upset Alabama again. Um, speaking of the SEC, Auburn. Auburn is just terrible. <laughs> it's just terrible. Um, and um, in about half an hour from now, the primetime game of the Big Ten Network tonight is Rutgers and Penn State. Or as, um, actually, it's Penn State at Rutgers, so... We're already calling it the poor game. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to get a good idea of what a dumpster fire looks like, just turn on that game. Uh. But, yeah, you can tell because I'm, I'm talking about other games more than this game. You can tell, just, again, it was, what are you going to do? It's a scrub game. Michigan was supposed to win. Michigan won. Not much other to say about that. Just, um, we move on to next week against BYU. And, again, I think this is going to be a really big test before the, non to open before the um, conference schedule. If Michigan pulls off a win over BYU, who has a quarterback right now who is throwing Hail Mary after Hail Mary, they pull off a win, Michigan could end up top 25. It's not entirely impossible. But um, entering the conference 3-1 and one will really do a lot of Michigan a lot of favors. And after the performance I've been seeing from these teams, um, conference actually looks um, pretty winnable. Got a decent home slate, and the teams that we're facing on the road aren't exactly the best teams. I think our toughest road game, honestly, is Minnesota. So, um, but yeah, we'll talk about it more next week after BYU. We'll see, get a better idea of where the team stands. But um, yeah, uh, for now, that, that will do it. So I will see you all next week, and go Blue!